Ah, Buffalo, I love you guys. You guys have so many problems and so many trade rumors, which makes it easy for somebody like me to come out here and think of a cool conversation to bring to the masses. Yesterday, it was part two of Jack Eichel. Today, we're going over part two, I guess, of another guy who is on the Sabres and who is linked to a whole bunch of other teams. Let's talk today about Sam Reinhardt, the second overall pick from the 2014 NHL entry draft, who had his best season pretty much this year. Now, I get that you can say, oh, he produced more points in this year or whatever, but like, circumstantially, and with the numbers involved, Sam Reinhardt was the best version of Sam Reinhardt in 2020-2021 than he has ever been before. The problem is, he is an RFA. His contract expired a few weeks ago, or a few days ago, whatever it is. He needs a new contract for next season, and according to reports from NHL insiders, it's appearing that Sam Reinhart does not want to stay in Buffalo. We had the rumors coming out earlier in the year as well, talking about how apparently he really wants a trade to a Western team. That's why we made our video talking about the teams in the Pacific as well as the Vancouver Canucks, then the entire Vancouver angle was explored even more when we saw ourselves the rumors that the Canucks apparently would be really interested. Well, we have ourselves another team that is apparently linked, and it's the direct, compositionally opposite kind of conversation that we had with Eichel yesterday, because with Eichel yesterday we talked about teams that apparently are not in the stakes anymore, for Reinhardt, we're dealing with another team that apparently is. Let's talk today about the Columbus Blue Jackets, because according to Elliot Friedman in the 31 Thoughts podcast, he says that Columbus has some of the main interest from what he has heard for Sam Reinhardt. He has heard Columbus and Reinhardt a lot. Now, this is a simple quote, but coming from Friedman himself, it's really interesting because Columbus isn't necessarily one of the teams that, when I think of a Reinhardt trade, a scenario where he gets sent over to a new team and re-signs a contract there, Columbus really isn't one of the first ones that pops into my mind. Firstly, it's not a quote-unquote Western team, like it was reported that Reinhardt wants to be traded to earlier in the year. Columbus is an Eastern Conference team, and quite frankly, it's on the Eastern side of the continent if you divide the continent in half based off of surface area. So geographically, it didn't really make sense to me. But also, when it comes to the overall status, I guess, of the Columbus Blue Jackets, yes, we know they wanted to trade for a center, but man, I wasn't really thinking of Sam Reinhardt as that kind of guy. Reinhardt was drafted as a center out of the Kootenai Ice all those years ago, but once he made his debut with Buffalo immediately stepping into the league, he was mostly played on the right wing. He stayed there for a good chunk of his NHL career up until this season where Jack Eichel was sidelined with that neck thing. They moved Reinhardt to center that time, and now you have yourselves a guy who produced probably his best statistical season ever with context involved. If you want a bit of a reminder, here you go. 25 years old, 6 foot 194 pounds, 25 goals in 54 games, and 40 points. A career high in goals and significantly fewer games played, and his second best point per game season on a team that was astronomically worse than when he had his point per game year, not to mention there wasn't any Eichel. So, for Sam Reinhardt, who literally carried the Sabres here, he is one of the only three players on this team to get more than 10 goals, and he had 12 more goals than the second place guy. He is a very interesting hot commodity on the market right now, especially in a position where he needs another contract. This is not a guy who is going to cost his full value like a Jack Eichel would be. He is unsigned. You don't have that guarantee to having a guy coming into your system with this player. And that in itself is another big reason as to why I wouldn't really consider Columbus when I would immediately think of, okay, who's going to go out there and acquire Reinhardt? Mostly because Jarmo Kekalainen has already been reported to being one of the most difficult contract negotiation people in the NHL. We had that athletic article earlier this year talking about why exactly it is these star players, the Duchesnes, the Bobrovskis, the Panarins, and all of them, all of them just seem to want to leave Columbus. And a big part of that had to do with the contract negotiation process. How Yarmo Kekalainen would ask you, all right, how much do you think you're worth? You tell them, okay, based off of this, this, and this, based off of this comparable, based off of my performance, we feel that my client is worth X amount of money. Kekalainen's like, no chance, we're not doing that. It's so interesting to me to involve a contract negotiation 
tactician like Yarmo Kekalainen appears to be in a situation where one of the biggest aspects of this trade is going to be the acquisition and assigning of a contract in the future. Now, with Patrick Laine, he's in a similar boat. He needs a contract right now. He's a Columbus Blue Jackets guy, too, but that's a little bit different. They traded for him after the season started. They got games out of him, and now he's here in a position where he's played some games, and apparently they know what they want out of him, and he's kind of got his own plan set out for him. It's a little different when you're acquiring a guy straight from scratch, only to say, okay, let's talk about your contract. There's no experience with Sam Reinhart in Columbus, so who's to say that Jarmo Kekalainen could even have a proper gauge as to how to value this kind of guy? You gotta remember, Sam Reinhart is coming off of a one-year contract, too, so this entire process was kind of similar to what happened a year ago. Furthermore, with all the stuff that we discussed in the Vancouver Reinhardt video, from Vancouver people talking about how Sam Reinhardt is playing a somewhat unsustainable game compared to the rest of his years, does Yarmo Kekalainen take the high route and say, okay, we believe in you, we think you can do what you did before, let's give you this amount of money because you're worth it? Or is it all right? I'm skeptical. You had this year where your goals per game, shot percentage, secondary assist rate, individual points percentage, and primary point individual points percentage were at an all-time high, and you scored 10 more goals than expected. Are you really worth the amount of money that you might think that you are? Not to mention the fact that Sam Reinhardt's reputation when it comes to overall media engagement and whatnot, it's a little bit tainted right now, and I'm not going to get into why. There was an interview done on Sportsnet 650 if you want to go ahead and look at that, but for the sake of this video, I don't really think it's that necessary to bring it up. However, though, when it comes to Reinhardt as a potential fit lineup-wise with the Columbus Blue Jackets, honestly, it makes sense in theory because we heard Kekalainen saying all this stuff about, oh, we need a number one center now. We need a guy to come out here and play with Line. A. We need a guy who can be that number one center a la Pierre-Luc Dubois. Obviously, you don't have Dubois anymore, but you're probably not going to trade for that guy back again. So, who else? It also makes things a lot more interesting when you think about who would be traded for a Sam Reinhardt. I saw some people throwing around the names of, oh, Patrick Laine, get this guy over to Buffalo, play him with ex Dylan Cousins or Middlestad or whatever. And that's just not how it works, man. They need a center to play with Laine. They're not going to trade away Laine for a center because then you're stuck with the same problem you had when you had Pierre-Luc Dubois. You need to do this without touching Line because at his best, Patrick Line is going to be your number one goal scorer, 40 goal, 45 goal guy heading into the long term. So, where do you go from here? If you want to get Sam Reinhardt, who probably isn't worth as much as he would be in a normal year because he doesn't have a contract, what do you give? And... I've been seeing a lot of people saying, okay, maybe it's the fifth overall pick then. Maybe it's a top prospect. I don't know how comfortable I am with an Igor Chinikov going, so maybe why not just give away the fifth overall pick? And you know what? When you think about it like that, the price really starts to get a little bit heavy for me. Like I know, I said that if it was ninth overall with Vancouver for Sam Reinhardt, you could justify that. But Columbus is in a position where... This team is not supposed to be that much better than Vancouver, right? Columbus was last in their division. They were worse than Detroit this year. They had an abysmal year when it came to the overall records and what their players were able to do. And they got this fifth overall pick because they were just down there. I think they could use the pick a little bit more when it comes to getting a prospect that would actually help them out in a few years. It really depends on whether or not your timeline for success is in this time frame. Because Reinhardt was drafted in 2014, Line was in 2016, you have Domi who was 2013. Is this the time frame where you want to say, okay, we want to be a contender now. We want to go from last in our division to a wild card, maybe better, and actually win ourselves around in the playoffs this year. For Vancouver, it's confirmed. I don't want to hear anybody comment saying, okay, Lego, you can't say that because for Vancouver, it's like the exact same thing. Yeah, I know, it is really bad here in Vancouver, but Jim Benning wants to do it, so that's what we're going to do. You know, not going to say it's right or wrong, but if that's the plan that they have in Vancouver land, then it makes a lot more sense to me trading away ninth for Reinhardt, especially with the fact that ninth is significantly lower than fifth. So, Fifth overall, Sam Reinhardt, would you give the Sabres two top five picks in this year's draft? There's a lot more to uncover with the Sabres in getting several top ten picks. We haven't even made a video about that yet, but it is indeed something we've glossed over, so I would like to get an extended look at that kind of idea heading into the long-term future. So talk to me in the comments what you think about this idea over here. Columbus really going hard after Reinhardt, really trying to get themselves a number one center to play with line A. I hope you enjoyed this video. And... 
Bye.